challenges of life? Then join Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church of Gastonia for an inspirational message prepared just for you. Good now and it is a wonderful thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Turn, if you will, to the book of Hebrews chapter number five. The book of Hebrews chapter number five. And want you to go down to verse number 12. Thank God he's the living water. My, 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 nothing refreshes your soul as the Spirit of God and the Word of God. And thank God that we have, we had sense enough to know that we have to run quickly to meet him and to see him and to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. David said, be thankful and bless his name. For the Lord is good. I said he's good. Anybody know that he's good? Somebody say, mm-mm, good. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hebrews chapter number 5 and verse, beginning at verse number 12 through verse 14. For though by this time... You ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe, but solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Is that the essence of what your Bible says? I want to start a series today entitled Overdue. Overdue. Will you look at your neighbor before you take your seat and say, neighbor, oh good neighbor, good good neighbor. Let's help Bishop talk about overdue. This is part one. I'm going to help him. What about you? Well, listen, turn on the other side. I don't think they were paying attention or behind you. Get another hand. That neighbor were, was not listening. Say, neighbor. Oh, good neighbor. Good, good neighbor. There are just some things that ought to be already. I'm going to help Bishop talk about overdue. Amen. Give God praise while you take your seat. Overdue. When you think about that word overdue, it suggests not having arrived, not happened or been done by the expected time. Uh, having been uh, needed for some time, something is overdue, that there was an expectation that it would have been done uh, by now, that it would have happened by now, that it would have occurred at this point and time. Now generally, there is a negative consequence when something is considered overdue. When you think about it, uh, they uh, at the library, if you check out a library, they put the stamp in there as to the date that it's supposed to be returned. And if the book is not returned, they, uh, they, they log it as overdue. And when you bring it back, you're going to have to do what? Pay a fine. And then when you think about an overdue 
bill. I know none of you have had to deal with anything like that, but uh, there, there are times when a, a bill might be overdue, and when it is, uh, it is going to cause what? Late fees. Can I get some help today? Maybe you have parked in a parking space, and, and it has uh, stated that you need to park one hour, and now you've been there an hour and a half or two, and, and now the meter is reading overdue, and you could be subject for what? A parking ticket. When a woman who is uh, pregnant, uh, the expectation is that the baby will be delivered in nine months. And, and sometimes after the expected time of birth, um, that a after it has come, there is a great deal of concern and danger for the baby and even the mother. And the doctor begins to monitor uh, even the more and, and because the baby's birth weight could be affected and the baby could get stuck uh, requiring a C-section. And, and then there's something called uh, amniotic fluids that can affect the baby's heart rate and, and the baby can become distressed all because the baby is overdue overdue, not having arrived, or not done by an expected time. And, and when I think about where we are this past week, uh, in particular, Wednesday night, God sent a prophet who challenged us in our dedication and in our loyalty to God and our commitment to the kingdom and the work of God. Am I right? I saw it as a confirmation to the word that the Lord has been ministering in Bible study and on Sunday mornings in the last five or six weeks where we've been talking about uh, being ambassadors for Christ and carriers of the gospel of Jesus Christ on assignment uh, to transform the world and, and to reconcile lost men uh, back uh, to God. And, and we have to really ask ourselves what and how are we doing as God's representatives? God, church, is putting a demand over this house. God is putting a demand over this church, over this ministry, that if we are going to be a part of the end time revival, then we must leave elementary things. Can I get a witness here? We, we, we got to grow up. Come on, help me in here today. We got to move forward. And, and uh, too often we are guilty uh, of what the Hebrew writer accused the congregation of. Uh, for uh, he addressed these people in Hebrews, and, and these people were concerned about uh, persecution. They, and they were concerned about losing their lives. This, this new church, this newfound religion, they, they were concerned about uh, suffering so much so that they were about to backslide. They, uh, they were about to turn back. They, they had become dull and they had become distracted by their circumstances. Can I get a witness? Now, we have talked about being ambassadors and, and disciples for Christ, those uh, who understand that uh, we have been created for God's glory, to do God's will, uh, for the transformation of this culture and the reconciling of people back to God. We have tried to, to speak to everybody to get you to understand your real purpose in the earth is not just to be here to have a good time and to enjoy your life and do what you want to do, but we have been placed here to do God's work. He said, I have made you ambassadors as if God uh, was doing his bidding through us. And, and if we're not going to be on assignment, if we're not going to be on purpose, uh, then what good are we to God if all we're doing is enjoying life and living large and having a good time just like the world? We might as well go on to 
heaven. Can I get a witness here? Now, it's not that God does not want you to enjoy life, but uh, that, uh, that comes uh, after you understand who you are uh, as ambassadors for Christ. Uh, for the truth is that many of us have been in the faith a long time and should be ones who are used in a greater way. It's overdue. Come on, some of us have been coming to church, being a part of church, being in the body of Christ, being saved for a long time, and yet, come on somebody, uh, yeah, it's long overdue that we ought to be producers and not just consumers. Can I get some help here? We ought to be producers. Tell your neighbor, you ought to be a producer by now. Come on, and not just a consumer. Come on, somebody. Uh, he, you you got to recognize then that, and that uh, knowing Scripture does not mean maturity. Huh? Just because you know Scripture and, and, and you know the books of the Bible, come on, you know the 23rd Psalm, you know the Lord's Prayer and so forth, that does not make you mature. But there must be the application of the word before we can call it maturity. I told you we got a whole lot of uh, Bible quotas and Bible totals, but uh, some are still just babes in Christ. Huh? No scripture, nowhere to find it and can recite it. But just because you have the ability to do that does not automatically mean that you are mature. Huh? To know what a person believes, watch what they do and not just what they say. Yeah, yeah, you get a real indication of what they really believe when you begin to watch what they do, watch where they go, watch what they say uh, and how they act. Uh, don't just listen as they quote scripture. Don't just watch as they put on certain garments and don't just watch uh, as they have a Bible and all those things. But you go back and you begin to watch what they do and that's going to be the true indication of what they believe. Because there are a whole lot of people who are saying stuff, but they're not doing things. And I watch what you do, which lets me know what you really believe. Come on, somebody. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter number 5 and, and verse number 12. The writer says, for though by this time you ought to be teachers. He said, he said if I can paraphrase, it's long overdue. You've been sitting under word, you've been taught in the Bible, you've been in Bible class, Bible study, sermons and teaching, and he says, by this time, it's overdue. You ought to be teachers, uh, but you need somebody to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. Somebody shout overdue. He said, and you have come to need milk and not solid food for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness for he is a babe but solid food belongs to those who are of full age that is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised they have disciplined themselves to discern both good and evil you got to tell a baby every move to make. Isn't that right? They're not able to discern yet between good and evil. And, and so the writer, uh, when you go back and reflect on the writings uh, uh, prior to these verses, he has been explaining to them how Jesus Christ came as the great high priest on the order of Melchizedek. Now this was a, a, a deep comparison that needed careful attention, uh, the things that he was trying to uh, convey to them, and the writer then takes notice. Now you go back up, let me read verse number 11. He says, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. And that's when he goes into the fact that though by now, by this time, you ought to be teachers. You ought to be ready for something more. 
You ought to be ready for something beyond pablin. You ought to be ready for something more than milk and rice. And, 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 and he says, but, but because these things require uh, more deep thought that I, I, I got to go back now and, and teach you as a newborn babe. Now, the reality still exists. People are dull to being open to hear spiritual things. Things that... Uh, 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 will, will give understanding to what it means to live a spiritual life and how to function as a believer in the earth, how to do the things that God requires and expects for us, that we become dull of hearing of that. We, uh, we don't really want to uh, pay attention and take the time to delve in uh, deeper, uh, but people are very quick to hear other information. Maybe we need to call the word of God gossip. Because if we call it gossip, maybe, we, maybe it's the way we've been presenting it. Maybe we need to say, child, you, you come here, call me. Maybe, maybe that's the problem. We, we packaged it wrong because we become dull when it takes time uh, to hear the word, but we will hear other instruction, other information that's in the earth. Uh, so he says, he says that uh, just in verse number 11, he says, uh, as I'm talking about uh, that Jesus is the high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. He picked up on the fact that they had just about gone to sleep. They had turned off. Their mind wasn't in it. They were not trying to strive to go deeper uh, in the things of God. Now notice then, this section of chapter number 5 is considered a rebuke. Somebody say a rebuke. Now what is a rebuke? Uh, a rebuke is uh, to reprimand, to scold. Come on somebody. It, it is to criticize adversely, and, and, and rebuke is a sharp or a stern reproof. Now, now it, uh, they later, it, it, it comes to mean uh, to beat back or to hack down, all right? These people should have been teaching not as they were professional, teachers in a professional position. That's not what he's saying when he said, though by this time you ought to be teachers. He's not saying that you ought to be able to stand before a classroom, a group of people, and to be able to delineate on the word of God and instruction like that. But he's saying and that uh, you rather should be able to teach by living an example. Can I get some help? That you've been in this thing long enough that somebody ought to be able to look at you. Somebody ought to be able to follow you. Somebody ought to be able to hear what you say and know that they are following in the things of God. As Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And truth be told that there are a whole lot of folk who've been in the way, who've been in the faith, who've been Christians a long time, and they're still at the same level they were when they entered into their Christian walk. I can't get any Y'all won't help me in here today. Huh? Yeah, they, 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 somebody ought to be able to listen to you. You, you. Some of us who are fathers of the faith and mothers of the faith and those who are adults in the faith supposedly ought to be able to come and to get a newborn babe or to get someone who's weak and trying to make their way in the faith. They ought to be able to come and we ought to be able to pour instruction in them. We, they ought to be able to see our example. We ought to be able to give a word of encouragement, a word that's going to build them up. But the truth of the matter is there are some folk who've been in the faith a long time. You don't want a new babe to ever get a glimpse of what I can't get anybody in here because if they get a glimpse of what your actions are and they will go astray I bet you won't help me this morning. There is an expectation that after a number of years of hearing the word, being taught the word over and over, that you can now lead others. Some of us, are afraid to leave somebody, lead somebody to Jesus Christ. Afraid 
to speak the gospel and to share your testimony among people who are unbelievers. I had a friend of mine who was sharing that he was preaching a revival. <clears throat> and as he, as he had ministered the word and he had opened up opportunity for people to come and connect with Christ, that there was, there was somebody who came up afterwards. And they, they talked to the pastor of the church, and, and uh, they were seeking a relationship uh, with, with Christ. And, and the pastor said, uh, well, um, brother uh, uh, officers, this young lady comes today, and she wants to connect with the church. What is your pleasure? And, and this pastor friend of mine said, whoa, 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 whoa. That, that's not what she's after. That's not what she's coming for. And he said, he said, that, is that what you're She said, no. He said, you want to accept Jesus Christ in your heart, don't you? And she said, yes. And the pastor said, well, I tell you what, you better go on and handle that. Now, here this is, the pastor of the church who is afraid or who is ignorant to how to lead somebody to Jesus Christ. They knew how to uh, invite them in and to pass them through the church by making a motion that we accept them as a member. And after having been baptized, they become a full, have all rights and privileges, but did not know how to take that lady through the steps of salvation in order for her to get saved. Now, if the pastor did not know how to take the woman through, the steps of salvation my god what in the world is going on in the church and the truth of the matter is that we could call on we ought to be able to call on every person in this church and you ought to be able to minister the grace of jesus christ and to win somebody and take them through the steps of salvation and to share with them uh, those basic things of the faith but the truth of the matter is we've been in it a long time and still need somebody to teach us. I can't get an amen anyway. See, growth requires solid food. Adults uh, don't live on milk. Can I get somebody? Huh? Uh, you got to understand that anybody that's on uh, milk uh, is not acquainted with teaching righteousness and living righteously and guiding people righteously and in the way of Jesus Christ. Don't be deceived by how long somebody has been in the faith as to whether or not they are able to handle meat or not. I'm not making up something. I'm telling you the evidence is real. It was real in the day of the Hebrew writer and it's real today right now in the churches of Jesus Christ because we concentrate and we put our focus and attention on worldly things, things that we think will benefit us more than uh, requiring to study the word. And let me tell you something. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of its righteousness and these other things will be added unto you. You can look at how much time people are willing to invest in the word, in scripture, in growing, in maturing in the things of God. They can run circles around you in a philosophical thought. Come on, somebody. And, and, but when it comes to the word of God, tell you every football statistic in the earth. But when it comes to the word, we, I'll bid for amens. Let me see. I, I, I'm paying for amens now. How much you get? Why is it that we sit under word? Or how is it that we sit under word? We're in classes. We're in study groups. And yet we are not maturing. Let's go over to Ezekiel. Let's go over to Ezekiel. Let's do that. Somebody said, let's do that. Ezekiel, go to chapter number two. Ezekiel chapter number two is Old Testament. It's all right if you go to the table of contents right now. I'm not, I'm not going to, because everybody doesn't know where every book is. 
Ezekiel chapter number 2, verse number 1. And he said to me, this is Ezekiel speaking that the Lord has been giving him visions in uh, chapter number 1. And he says to me, son of man, stand on your feet and I will speak to you. Then, verse 2, the spirit entered me when he spoke to me. That's that living water. That refreshing spirit we've been talking about this morning. The spirit entered me when he spoke to me and set me on my feet. And I heard him who spoke to me. And verse 3, and he said to me, son of man, I am sending you to the children of Israel, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. For they are impudent and stubborn children. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. As for them, get this now, whether they hear or whether they refuse, for they are a rebellious house, yet they will know that a prophet has been among them. Now, now, so I, I, the Lord took me to that scripture when I began to ask, how is it that, and that we sit under the word? How is it that we study year in and year out? We're in worship. We're in Bible study. We have Bibles. We got more access to the teaching of the word of God throughout the week. Many of you are watching TV programs of sermons and teaching, and you got tapes and so forth. And the Lord took me to this particular uh, book and passage, and he says, listen, as for them, whether they will hear or whether they refuse for they are a rebellious house come on now we're beginning to understand how it is that we are overdue and that we ought to be teachers rather than have someone to continue to teach us now we understand according to the word here that maybe it's because we are a rebellious people And he says, whether we hear or, or, or don't hear, uh, whether we hear or do what God says or not, uh, does not mean that the prophet has not done his job, the teacher has not done his job, the teacher, the exhorter, just because we don't hear and walk in it, does not mean that they have not done their job. That's what the Lord said to Ezekiel. He said, now listen, because sometimes you, when you witness to people, how many of you witness to people, you share with people, you tell them about the good things of God, and it seems like they ignore you they put it down they don't want to hear it they sometimes get ugly with you and sometimes it starts to irritate you personally and God said don't let it upset you personally don't let it bother you personally because if they don't hear you uh, or if they do hear you or don't hear you uh, they're gonna know that there has been a prophet among, that you have released what God said you have done what God said and so sometimes don't let it tap your spirit when you're trying to tell people right and wrong and they continue doing don't let it tear up your spirit because sometimes the saints end up getting mad and we're ready to fight over the gospel <laughs> huh he says so no no i want to tell you at the beginning the issue is not you the issue is that these are rebellious people huh overdue somebody say overdue Huh, yeah, yeah. Coming and hearing the word and rebelling against the word calls for a rebuke. When God's word says what to do and we do otherwise, it is called rebellion. Whether you say verbally, I'm not doing uh, or I'm not going to do what the Lord says or not. If you refuse to do it, it's rebellion. Huh? 
You might not come out and say, I'm not doing anything the Lord said. I heard the word, but I'm not doing it. Whether you say that or not, when your action, come on somebody, I told you earlier, uh, I'm not paying attention to what you say. I'm paying attention to what you do because what you do is a great indication of what you believe. And when you don't do what the word says, it's an indication that you don't believe the word. And if you, come on, help me in here today. The people had become disloyal to God. Their allegiances were elsewhere, and it was evident in how they came before God, how they refused to heed to God's word. Other things had taken priority. They had become comfortable in God being no longer first priority. And the church of Jesus Christ today has become good with the fact that Jesus is not first on the agenda. We're good with that. We're good with wherever we can fit him in. Jesus, you better get in where you can fit in. Because I got some other things that come before you. The Bible said, have no God, other God before thee. But we have made a whole lot of other gods before him. And we've become good with that. We are all right with that. I can work him in my agenda. And if I can't work him in, I'll catch you later down the road, Jesus. And this is what the people that Ezekiel was speaking to, they had done the same thing. Uh, they had gone in and they had connected with the people around them. And they had begun to act like the people around them rather than going in and setting a standard as we are the children of God the true and living God and God is first in my life huh they had become comfortable it it now let me tell you it started in transgression started in transgression now to transgress that means a failure to do one's duty, all right? Transgression, a failure to do what is expected. A sin is a transgression against God's word. It means to break or to violate. That's where the issue begins, that we start breaking here and there. We start violating the word here and there. We start ignoring the word here and there. And before you know it now, at this point of transgression, there is at least a relationship uh, where one is uh, convicted about the act that he's done. At least at that point, there is some conviction. There is some concern, and, and it bothers you some. But, but when it gets to rebellion, now rebellion, you understand what rebellion is. Rebellion is to just openly renounce the authority of which one owes allegiance. That's what rebellion is. Children rebel against parents. They just openly renounce. Children rebel against other adults. You're not my mama. You can't tell me what to do. People openly renounce authority. And we are living in a day where there has been the loss of respect for authority. And it started when we began to lose respect for the authority that God has over us. I am my own person. Can't nobody tell me what to do. I'm not listening to that preacher. You can listen to him if you want to. You forget about these are not the preacher's words. These are the words of God. And God has authority over us. It's rebellion. It is open resistance. To authority. Who is our authority? The Lord our God. When we neglect and transgress against him, it leads to full open rebellion. That's what's happening. Full open resist the authority of, in the word of God. God created us. God ought to be able to tell us what he expects from us. Isn't that right? And when we choose to do our thing rather than submitting our will to his will, it's open rebellion whether you call it that or not. 
Your actions represent your beliefs. And God sees that your actions are not with him, even though you've been getting word, even you, though you've been under teaching, you are open and rebellious against the authority of God. When you neglect truly what God says, he, you got to understand, when you, whenever one neglects uh, what serving God and doing what God says, you become an idolater to someone or something else. Don't make any graven image. Don't worship any other thing. But whenever we neglect following the word of God, I heard them talking about it in church school this morning. Following the word, doing what the word says, and, and not having any other gods before me, and the, the, the punishment and so forth that comes as a result of not doing it. It's one thing to say that and do something else, and it's another thing to hear that and do what the word says. And the truth of the matter, without recognize it, uh, recognizing it, we in the 21st century have become big time idolaters. Watch where you spend your time. Watch where you spend your money. Watch where your investments are. Watch where you pay attention. Watch the things that you make sure you protect. Because what you value, you're going to protect. Isn't that right? So you check, you check you out. See what it is you have been protecting lately. See what it is and that you have been investing your time and energy and funds and, and so forth in. And it will be an indication as to whether or not God is first or your stuff is first. Huh? Some people's job is more important than God. Now, God, you were important until I got the job. Now I got to put my allegiance in the job so I can keep the job. Well, you got to recognize that if God opened that door, even if that door closes, God is able to open another door. And rather than going and committing all your allegiance to the job, you ought to say, God, I'm going to serve you until I die because you open up a way for me. And if the door closes, I'm not going to fret because you're the God who has the cattle on a thousand hill. It belongs to you. And if that job closes down, maybe my assignment is over in that position. And God God has shifted me to another place of assignment. The enemy, you got to understand, one writer says this, moral transgression leads to personal opposition against God. That when you begin to transgress, you begin to omit. I didn't do what he said. I did what he told me not to do. You begin in moral transgressions. It leads to personal opposition against God. Now, the enemy of God's word will become an enemy of God himself. Whew. You say, I would never be an enemy of God. Well, James 4 and 17 said, Therefore, whoever knows the right thing to do, yet fails to do it, is guilty of sin. See, I didn't, I didn't say that. My name is not James. My name is John. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Did, did I tell you that the enemy of God's word would become the enemy of God himself? You said, I, I, not me, not me, but you got to understand then that whenever we rebel against the word, we rebel against God. And to be, the Bible tells us that we are ambassadors. I, I've been trying to convey that. Everywhere you go, you are an ambassador. Everywhere you go, 24-7, there is never a time when you're not an ambassador. You don't clock in and say, all right, I'm getting ready to go on an ambassador duty, and then clock out and say, my ambassador duty is over. I'm getting ready to go shake my leg and do my own thing. No, everywhere you go, among all the people you meet and see, you are an ambassador. And Jesus Christ said, I have made you an ambassador, and you're supposed to reconcile 
reconcile the world back to Jesus Christ. And you got to recognize uh, that when you are not doing it, let me tell you this. I took, I took the pastor, I took the prophet to Charlotte Tuesday night to minister. And he was ministering the word in the church. And he says, he said that, listen, you, you are supposed to make sure, you're supposed to make sure that, uh, that you, hallelujah, you're supposed to make sure that, that you are an ambassador for Christ, that you're supposed to win souls for Christ. He says that if in a year's time you have not won anybody to Christ, he said you are the antichrist. I fell back in my seat. I said, good God. He said that here too? My God. I know he said it Tuesday. I missed it uh, Wednesday. But, but, but can you get with that? That, that you are, have become an enemy of God if you are not proactively and actively winning people to Christ. There are too many of us who ought to be by now just overdue. You ought to have one soul in the kingdom by now. Good God, you've been saved 10 years and you ain't want a soul to Christ? You've been in Bible study 15 years and you, you, you're afraid to witness and share the gospel? He said you're the Antichrist. You are against God. Because listen, you're either for me or against me. If you're not working for me, you got to be working against me. You don't believe the word because you're not doing the word. The Bible says, be ye doers of the word and not merely hearers. Because when you are just a hearer, you deceive yourself. Huh? Oh, come on now. Somebody say overdue. Look at your name as a neighbor. What about you? See, see, understand, God told Ezekiel that the people are impudent. That means that they have become disrespectful and bold and they have a disregard for God. Now you would never say, oh no, that's not how I feel about God. Oh no, I would never, not me, I, I love God. No, 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 I beg to differ. Because if you love God, you line up with God. Huh? See, see, if you love God, you follow his precepts. Precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little, there. You got to recognize that when you begin to have actions that don't line up with God, you don't love God nor his church. So he said, so, so how is it then do believers show that they are overdue? Now, I just want to give you a few things. They, they're not in any particular order. But when the Hebrew writer says, listen, I got some other stuff that I want to delve into in instructing you about being in the kingdom of God. But I got to lay off of that because you're dull of hearing. You get tired. You get restless. You, you, you know, saints in America can't stay in church an hour. And we start fidgeting. We start moving, we start looking at our watch, we start thinking about where we're going. My God, yeah, we haven't been tuned in the whole hour at that. About 15 or 20 minutes of it, we've been in pocketbooks and on texts and responding to Facebook and everything else. We ain't even been fully here, and yet you go, you go over. But you let them dead skins or... Oh, you let, you let them, them boys go over time. We're going to sit right there. I don't care if they can go into five over time. We're going to be right there. We're going to uh, make sure, and we're going to tweet and text about it, and we're going to talk about it. Uh, but my God, you let the preacher go over 15 minutes, and we don't have time. Where are we going? It ain't none of your business where I'm going. I go where I want. I'm going. You got what I'm saying. That's why I'm talking about rebellious, just rebellious. I understand. Listen, I'm not unreasonable that people have things we got to do. There are different times, but I'm speaking in general terms, so don't take it offensively. 
I'm not talking about any particular person or anything. I'm talking about the mindset of American Christians today is that we are dull. I bet you we can't go a week without listening to Steve Harvey in the morning on the way to work. <laughs> Nephew Tommy and all the foolishness and everything. I bet you we can't go. To, turn on some good gospel. Turn on a word and let the word minister to you. We too dull of hearing the word. I got it Sunday. I don't need it anymore. My God. But if the only time you exercise uh, your muscle is on Sunday, you'll never grow it. So, so he, he's dealing with this, and I want to read, I want to read um, Hebrews chapter number five. I want to read from the amplified version. Hebrews chapter number five, I'm going back to verse number 12. Let me see the amplified. Let me pull up that. The amplified says in verse number 12, for though by this time, you ought to be teachers because of the time you have had to learn these truths. You actually need someone to teach you again the elementary principles of God's word from the beginning. And you have come to be continually in need of milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is doctrinally inexperienced and unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a spiritual infant. But solid food is for the spiritually mature whose senses are trained by practice to distinguish between what is morally good and what is evil. So what's going on that is somehow an indication that we still are overdue? Well, A, we weaken our prayer life. Huh? The Bible says men ought to always pray and not think. Isn't that right? Pray without ceasing. Turn to his face. Look upon him. Call upon the name of the Lord. Pray to the Lord. And we got people from leadership all the way down to the parking lot who refuse to understand the importance of corporate prayer. Don't tell me you have a wonderful prayer life privately if you never display it publicly. The issue is that we ought to by now uh, understand that if we're going to succeed, if we're going to accomplish things, we got to come together and pray. God said it in his word when Solomon was dedicating the temple. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. And, and he said, and then seek my face. He said, then I will hear from heaven, forgive them of their sin and heal the land. We are still babes and we still expect God. God to move without us coming in corporate prayer. Overdue. By now, we ought to know that a church, listen, the first century church prayed together. They studied together. They fellowshiped together. And the Bible said that such was added to the church daily. They had one day, they opened up the church and 3,000 people came to the Lord. Another time as a result of their prayers in the temple, 5,000 came to the Lord. And another time when the Bible says that the enemy was persecuting them and trying to stop them and shut them down, the Bible said that the church grew under the persecution. We got babes now who stand in leadership and never show up for corporate prayer. Somebody over here, somebody over here. Can I get an amen somewhere? Huh? Weak in prayer. Not praying publicly, you ain't praying privately. Mm. God, I didn't know it would be this quiet. I thought it was going to be quiet. I didn't know it was this quiet. Lord, now what do I do? What do I do, Lord? He said, don't be afraid of their faces. That's what he told Ezekiel. He said, listen, they're going to know a prophet has been among you. Don't be afraid of their faces. They can scowl and look at you. He said, but they're going to know that a prophet has been among you. How do you know? Uh, because it's going to either convict you. Come on, somebody. 
no particular order. How do we know people are still babe? Because of their lack of enthusiasm for the worship of God. Huh? We mature people understand that we worship God. We worship him in spirit and in truth. We don't, we don't just lollygag in and, and lollygag out. And worship is not just what you do with your hands. True worship begins in the heart. Come on, help me somebody. Where your treasury is there, your heart will be also. And if God is your treasure, you're going to worship your treasure. Sometimes our treasure is our cause. Sometimes our treasure is our home. Our children, our leisure time, our good time, our travel and all that. God is not against that. But your treasure ought to be in him. And when your treasure is in him, you will worship him fully. God, I bless you. He, you said he's the one that opened doors for you, right? He's the one that makes ways for you, right? Or are you just talking? Let me keep walking. See. We can know we are still babes and it's overdue that we ought to be teachers. We're still walking in fear and unbelief. Huh? You got to understand that many don't know how to walk in the place of victory because they're still walking in unbelief. And the Bible calls unbelief wicked. Hebrews earlier in the fourth chapter, it said that they were not able to enter into the rest even though the word that we received was the word that they received, but because they had wicked unbelief, they were not able to enter into the rest. And if you can't enter into the rest, you can't walk in the true victory with, with God. And so many people are walking in fear, afraid of everything, paranoid about everything, afraid of the enemy, afraid of this and that. And listen, we are the people of God. Come on, somebody. We are the children of the most high. I can't get anybody to help me in here. I better hurry up. D, how do you know people still babes needing people to teach? Because they get caught up in arguments over things that don't win souls. Got all that word in you. You got all that scripture. You know all those texts. You've been in every teaching. You got every lesson that you've ever had. You, got e you know all the things to say. And yet, you're the one being used by the enemy to always create arguments that don't win nobody to Jesus. Lord, have mercy. 2 Timothy, the second uh, chapter go back to the New King James. 2 Timothy, the second chapter. Go down to verse 22. I'm about done. You know, I ain't going to be able to take it up here too much longer. Y'all looking at me like this. He says, flee, verse 22, 2 Timothy, chapter number 2, verse 22. Flee also youthful lusts. But pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But avoid, get this, somebody say avoid. avoid. Foolish and ignorant disputes. Knowing that they generate strife. He said avoid. Foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife, and a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition, if God uh, perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth. When you got people who are supposedly knowing what the Word of God said, and they're the ones who are the root of arguments don't win anybody to Christ, that tells me, I don't care what you say, I'm watching your actions, and your actions say, I don't love God enough to make sure that there's peace in the house of God, and to make Make sure that we annihilate anything that can disrupt the flow of the Holy Ghost. Elder Abel spoke it earlier prophetically. She said, we got dams that block up the flow of the Spirit. And sometimes it's because we are so rebellious against the Word. We're supposed to be sanctified and Holy Ghost filled. And yet we're the ones that's in the center of foolishness that does not edify the people of God, does not glorify God, and wins nobody to Christ. When you are a person who's not glorifying God, not winning souls, not transforming, and lives, you the Antichrist. Ca 
caught up in stuff. We're supposed to stomp stuff out. We're supposed to be able to say, listen, I'm a mature child of God. And listen, we got to protect the, the things of God. The world looks at the church and laughs because we can't get along with each other. And how are we going to win the world? Well, I thought I saw something coming at me. E. We are comfortable in carnality. Huh? And you know what? Babies don't play nice together. They, they can't get along, can you? You, you? you always got to separate. You always got to pull them apart. They, 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 they seem not to be able to, to get along. People who are always comfortable in carnality. It's carnal. Huh? Paul, Paul addressed it. L let me, I'll tell you what I'm, let me finish. Let me stop because I'm not finished. The Holy Ghost not finished, but I'm going to stop. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3 and verse number 1. He says, and I, brethren, could not speak to you as the spiritual people, but as the carnal, as the babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you're still not able. Overdue. For you are still, verse number three, carnal. Well, where there, is, there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, and you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Let's coast a little bit. Let's coast a little bit here. Let's let that marinate. Hallelujah. Come on, begin to worship the Lord. Come on, find us, God. Find us in your word. Find, I'm not finished. That's part one. I got some more. The Holy Ghost has some more. Overdue. By now. By now. What are we doing? with what we receive. Is it just really going in one ear and out the other? We're still clipped up over the same issues. We're still stumbling around the same stuff. We still act like mere men. Paul said, I, wanted to, I, I can't teach you like I want to teach you because you, you still want to be in elementary school. Been in this a long time. Can you, can you imagine this is what the church looked like? Jeffro Bodine with a little desk on his, uh, Jeffro Bodine sitting at, the, at a table uh, that's made for fourth graders. Grown big old Jeffro Bodine. And Jeffreen sitting on the other side. <laughs> that's what the church looks like. We'll be winning people, conquering things, slaying demons, and, and taking authority in this earth. But we get so caught up on mundane stuff. We get dull whenever it's time to go deeper in doctrine and eternal truths. We spend our time saying, stop. You, you know you're supposed to be doing this or that. We spend our time spinning over the same stuff. We got time in school, but we're not advancing in school. Because we're playing, you're shooting spitballs, somewhere daydreaming, huh? Caught up in the wrong stuff. The world is dying and going to hell. 
and the church is still spinning and rocking in a chair going nowhere because we are dull overdue everybody stand if you're looking for dynamic worship inspirational teaching and a friendly atmosphere you can visit us on Sundays at 221 West Bradley Street in Gastonia North Carolina for more information about our ministry, you can call 704-865-9016. To order your personal copy of today's message or any other broadcast, please call 704-865-9016 and indicate the broadcast date. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast with Bishop John A. McCullough II and the Friendship Christian Church. Make sure you join us next week at the same time. And remember, let God take control and let the Spirit flow.